Good evening and welcome to tonight's service from St Peter's in Harton and St Mark and St Cuthbert's at Cleeton Park. Grace and peace to you from God. May you fill us with truth and joy. We come together as the family of God to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word and to bring before him the needs of the world. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in the spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for those things we have thought, said and done which separate us from you and from one another. You love us, but we find it hard to love others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive us, but we bear grudges against each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in this image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Raise the rafters with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God. 
a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The Lord is our God and we are his. The people of his pasture and the sheep of his flock. The Collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Amos 6. Alas for those who are at ease in Zion and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. Alas for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the store, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David improvise on instruments of music and who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore they shall now be first to go into exile and the revelry of the, of the loungers shall pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter to Timothy. There is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it is he alone who is who has immortality and dwells in inapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his heart, I know that while in heaven he stands, no 
tongue can bid me thins depart. No tongue can bid me thins depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, reading from the 16th chapter beginning at the 19th verse, and this is read from the Jerusalem Bible. There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosoms of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And in his torment in hell, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, remember that during your life good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now, he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if he wanted to, crossing from our side to yours and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house since I have five brothers to give them warning so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Ah, oh, no, Father Abraham, said the rich man. But if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, if they will not listen either to Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone should rise from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Heavenly Father, open your word to our hearts, and our hearts to your word, 
and give us your grace to receive it, to understand it, and to obey it, only for the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. That Gospel reading, which we have just heard, tells of the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. That's not the Lazarus brother of Martha and Mary, but Lazarus the leper and beggar. Now this parable may be regarded as a drama divided into three scenes. Its keynote is the contrast between two lives, and in each scene the contrast is strikingly preserved. Scene one, you will remember, we hear of the two men living in the world. One, the world has smiled on. He is rich, popular, and one of the world's great men. But the other man, we are told, was a beggar, Lazarus, who was indeed having a rough time. He was in extreme need and very ill, and sorely was he tried. In the second scene, we are shown something that is the one certain factor in all of our lives, the death of both of them. But our Lord lifts the curtain in scene three, and in the great unseen world, the contrast continues. But strikingly, it is reversed. In this world, the rich man is said to be the one who is tormented, not by the arbitrary judgment of God, but by the working out of the unchangeable law of his own life. And now, finally, he realises the responsibility of life, and what a solemn thing it is. He has indeed now torment of sight, of taste, and of memory. Perhaps we can hear him reflect, well, it was my own fault. I had a daily call from Lazarus and paid no attention. He could well say that. The rich man makes his excuses and requests to send words to his family to warn them and explain that whilst he was unjust, they should heed the comments and we hear the reply that the parable gives to that comment that his family have Moses and the prophets, as indeed did Lazarus, to guide them and to continue to suggest that even a special supernatural manifestation would not convince his family. So, what are the lessons from this drama? Well, perhaps... In the first instance, this is a powerful warning from Jesus that wealth can deafen people to hearing God's word. Jesus challenges wealthy lifestyles, which in turn impoverish others, which was true in the first century and still true today. We could perhaps think of the way the actions of the West in relation to the climate change, have affected the lives of the poorest in the world. Just recently flooding over a third of Pakistan, a devastating reminder that the earth and its riches belong to us all, not just to a few. Another lesson is equally stark, as Jesus signals clearly that life beyond this world is real and that our actions now have consequences then. This parable sends the message that worldly and earthly possessions are of no benefits in the afterlife. Those who have suffered on earth will receive their reward in heaven. And another point to draw out perhaps is that we are put on earth to work, to do our bit, to fulfil our potential, and perhaps even more importantly, to leave it in a better place than we found it, rather than taking advantage while we can, 
we should think of others and how we can share. People complain of God that his revelation, his involvement, his invisibility is not sufficiently clear to compel our obedience. Well, that is usually an excuse to justify neglect or violation of what has been revealed to guide millions through the world. However, we do have as much guidance as all the saints have had, and we profess often to believe it. So why don't we behave in accordance with our beliefs? If we fail to act on what we say we do believe, it can only be our fault. In recent days and weeks, we have heard much about our late Queen, and to a large extent, it is true to say that everything has been said that could be said. But one story I heard reminded me of this parable, and with this I close. While at church one day, Queen Elizabeth heard a sermon on Jesus' promise to return to this world. And on speaking to the minister at the end of the service, the Queen said she would like for Jesus to return in her lifetime. And the minister inquired as to why she would want this. And she replied simply by saying that she could then lay her crown before him. Well, wealth and riches in and of themselves are not the problem. It is how we use them that defines us. Despite the wealth and the riches which surrounded the Queen, she made it her duty to live her life daily for others and for God. A message we have heard so many times from so many people and which, of course, she did right until the end. A true example we would all do well to follow. Amen. In faith, we continue in prayer. We pray to the Lord. In faith, we pray. We pray to you, our God. That this week may be holy, peaceful and full of your presence. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. That the work we have to do and the people we engage with this week may bring us closer to you. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. That we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God, that you will sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, ill, oppressed or anxious. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God, that you will receive tenderly and deal gently with those who leave our presence in this life to join you. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. God of mercy, you know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we join in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power 
and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God calls us to peace. In God's justice is our peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. In Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the costs, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for reward, save that knowing that I do your will. Amen. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light. Amen. Though many, we are one body in Christ. We belong to one another. By God's grace, we have different gifts. We will use them in faith. Rejoice in hope, stand firm in trouble, be constant in prayer. Filled with his spirit, we will serve the Lord. Eternal giver of love and life, your son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation, purchase of God Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood This is my story, this is my song Praising my Saviour all the day long This is my story is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest I in my Saviour am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Saviour This is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour.